Well, welcome. I'm Dick Tosdell. I'm one of the technical advisors to Collective Mining. I'd like to welcome you to a beautiful gray day here in Supia. But what I would like to do today is sketch the geologic and the hydrothermal evolution of the Apollo system. One needs to look at the Apollo as a large porphyry copper gold silver system and not just a small part of it which has been described in all the newsletters. So let's let's take a series of, of colored markers and we'll just kind of draw on the topography that we exist. So we have this and we have a hill. Okay so this is very schematic and it's not going to be drawn to scale of course. And you'll have to forgive some of the drawing because I'm basically only good at sticks. You know I'm not an artist. So you have two, two units here, two intrusive units. You have what looks to be an older quartz porphyry unit. We'll put it up here. And that's a quartz porphyry. Okay. Then you have a younger unit intrude set, and that's a diorite, systems of diorites. Now, in each of these are multi-phases. So I'm just sort of lumped them all together. So the first thing you see here, the oldest event, this is just the architecture. Of course, we have no idea what was originally above the system. But the first thing you see here is a porphyry stockwork. It's composed of the high temperature sugary A-type quartz veins, as well as the early biotite veins. There are sulfides in these veins, but we don't know at this point whether they come in high temperature or they actually are superposed with some of the lower temperature systems. But we basically had a porphyry system. Okay, we'll just use the red lines to indicate the porphyry. What happens as the system evolves, because you know in porphyries there's multiple phases, and you go from early porphyry through an intermineral sweep through to a late sweep. What happens here is somewhere down here at depth, we had another intrusive phase, another porphyry, a diorite porphyry. And coming from the top of that, you had uh, rapid fluid separation into two phases, a vapor and a brine. At that stage, what happens is you have a volume expansion and you have a breccia that blasts through the rocks. Okay, so you, had a, you have a porphyry source and then you have a breccia phase. Okay, and the matrix is rock flower because the, the, the vapor is driving the, the volume expansion and the brecciation and the fluidization. What follows that is the copper system. You have then copper coming up it's, that comes in through here and you're precipitating chalcopyrite plus other sulfides is replacing the rock flower matrix in the, in the angular breccias. So this is a quite a normal sequence. We have the high temperature veins followed by the more intermediate temperature, probably somewhere around 400 degrees of sulfide precipitation. Overprinting that is a still younger system which is another has to have another porphyry intrusion much deeper at depth and it's leaving a, it exhales a fluid and those fluids are coming up oops are coming up and they're forming your carbonate base metal veins so these are polymetallic veins lead zinc copper with a gang of quartz and then to carbonate. And so those are cutting across here. So it, to summarize, if we go in sequence, you have early uh, porphyry, and this has the potassic alteration. Completely pervasive potassic alteration in all the rocks from bottom to top. Those are then super cut. I lost my blue pen. There it is. Those are then cut by a, an intermineral stage that has potassic alteration at depth and 
evolves with time to chlorite sericite at sh shallow depths. Okay, so the chloride sericite is overprinted on that. This is, comes with copper, really a large amounts of silver, and gold. Overprinting that is the late event, which is the polymetallic. But, geez, I can't spell. But, but, there we go. I forgot a T. Metallic quartz carbonate veins. And so these are these are to make it easier in the logging process. We've they've, they've taken to call them the carbonate base metal veins, CBM veins. So for any porphyry geologist, they're going to recognize this as standard evolution in a porphyry copper system. So you have to look at Apollo not as a breccia, but as a porphyry copper deposit. But the, the value seems to, at this point in time in the exploration, seems to be associated with an intermineral stage of brecciation.